Hello and welcome to another critical tutorial on this animation. Please watch until the end for many tips and tricks you can use on your future projects. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Derivative as well as our Patreons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification to support us into making more tutorials like this. For more tutorials and downloadable files, check out our Patreon. If you don't want to commit to the Patreon, you still have the chance to purchase our files on Gumroad. These include the Toy files, the Tox files, an HD and a 4K render. For the first 20 people to purchase any of the Gumroad files, there is 20% off. You just need to type A code as a discount code on the checkout. I'll leave all links in the description. Now on to today's tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be doing a carousel. The concept of this project is first we want to create four shapes positioned in a circle and the camera in the center. Then we want to animate the camera movement from one object to the next. Let's press tab and create a sphere sub followed by a transform and an all. After this, we'll attach two geometry comps. One with a line material, so we get this grid look. And one with a constant material, so that the spaces in between the grid are opaque and we don't see through the sphere. Let's continue with the rendering setup. A camera comp and a render top. An RGB key for the black background an out and at the end we'll attach an all top. Let's rename the null top at the end to icon and we'll lock this. This is a simple and useful trick I like to use on my project. The purpose of this is once you have an icon, if you save your file, then you'll get this little thumbnail with a render. So you won't need to open the project to find out what it looks like. This is helpful in cases when you have a lot of touch designer projects and are not so creative and organized with the naming of your projects. Let's open the parameter window of the constant material and we'll set the color to black. Great, so this is all we need for the first object. To create the rest of them, we'll copy the whole network up until the render top and paste it three times. So now that we have all the objects, we want to position them in the same distance from the camera. Before we do this, let's position the camera at the origin. So let's open the parameter window and make sure that all translate values are set to zero. To make things easier for us, we're going to link all the objects positioned together. So every time we make a change to one of the shapes, the rest will follow. This will save us time and it's good practice so that we ensure that none of the shapes might move and cause the animation to look off. So just for clarity, I'm going to color the first mini network another color. So this is the shape that we're going to move and the rest is going to follow. Let's go to Geometry Viewer for a second. First, we're going to figure out which are the shapes in the opposite directions of the camera. And then, to actually link the movement, we're going to write down the expression on the transform 2, 3 and 4 for the x and z axis in the opposite direction with a minus. And then, once we've done this, we'll actually move transform 1 in the z axis and the rest will follow. Great, now that we have all the shapes and they're all linked, let's make the automatic camera movement. First, let's create an LFO chop. Then right click somewhere on the background and select Collapse Collected while the LFO is selected. This will create a new folder with the LFO inside. We'll rename this new folder to Camera Rotation. Let's go inside the folder and create a rename after the LFO and an out chop after. I'll move the rename and the out right at the end of the network since we need more space after the LFO. In the rename, let's put the two name to RY since the camera will move along the Y axis. Set the type of LFO to Pulse. Create a count after the LFO. In the parameter window in the count tab, I set the limit to loop mean max, the minimum to zero and the maximum to three, thinking this is the number of objects we have. Turns out this was wrong and we'll see in a minute why. Let's create a math after the count. 
In the parameter window, go to the Multi Add tab and set the multiply to 90. Here, if we scroll out the folder and create a null after and put the null viewer active, we notice here in the node that the value is changing from 0 to 3. But as long as we're in top viewer mode, we cannot notice, since we have the same exact shape in the same exact position within the next 90 degrees field of view. If we switch to Geometry Viewer, we can actually see the camera moving from one object to the other. Let's go back to the Rotation node, and from here we attach a lag, and here we notice that after the fourth rotation the camera goes back all the way to the first object. And this is where we notice the error I did in the count chop, causing the counting to start over after the third object. So back to the count, instead of choosing min max loop limit, we need to set the limit to off. Great, now that's working fine, but we notice that the movement of the camera seems a little off. So to improve this, we need to go back to the lag. If we only increase the first value, this will only slow down the beginning of the movement. Whereas if we only increase the second value, this will slow down the end of the movement. If we increase both values of the lag, the movement will slow down completely. But the problem we have here is the object will still not stop at the end. This happens because the lag is not compatible with the frequency of the LFO. If we go back to the LFO and decrease the frequency to around 0.4, then the camera will stop for a moment when the object is in the center of the field of view. Great, now let's scroll out back to the main network. In the camera settings, you can always change the value of the field of view angle to go closer or further from the objects. From here you will notice that I've added these four shape components onto my project. These are all generative shapes which are constantly changing. So you can choose to keep going with the spheres or you could create your own shapes, change up the colors or if you want to download our generative shapes you can do so if you're on our Patreon or you could also purchase them on Gumroad. Great, now I'm going to attach each new shape to the respective transform instead of the sphere. Alright, so we're done here with the first part, we've got a working animation and in the next part of this tutorial we're going to create a cool background for our animation using the Touch Designer interface. Let's press tab and we're going to create a screen grab top. The screen grab top turns the main screen output into a top image. It can be captured in real time while you work. So this will grab everything your screen is displaying at the moment. Once you insert the screen grab, you should grant Touch Designer access to record your screen. Before you do this, make sure you've already saved your project, because Touch Designer will have to quit and reopen to allow this. Now if we zoom in, we can see what the screen grab is actually recording. Ok, so let's right click after the screen grab and we'll attach a threshold top. In here we notice we have a threshold value of 0.5 and what the threshold does is it will take the pixel values of the input and will transform the pixels with a lower value than 0.5 to 0 and the pixels which have a higher value than 0.5 they will get transformed to 1. What this practically means is all the dark parts of the screen grab will turn to value 0 and will not be displayed and everything which is brighter will be displayed. And this is how we actually get this look. Ok, now let's right click after the threshold and we'll attach an overtop. Let's move the network closer to the rendering network from above and then we'll connect the RGB key to the second input of the over and the over to the out. Great, so here we have our background. For the purpose of this tutorial, I don't want to be able to tell that the background is the Touch Designer interface. So to make it a little bit more mysterious, we're going to add some mirrors and tiles. Let's right click after the threshold, go to insert operator, insert the mirror top and in the parameter window set the rotation to 90 degrees. Then let's right click after the mirror, insert operator and add a tile top. Let's repeat and we'll add another mirror followed by another tile top. And then to make it more dynamic, we could animate the crop top and bottom values of the last tile. 
I want the movement to go from 0 to 1, and then we can decide on the speed. To animate the values from 0 to 1 and back again, I'll use a custom component I usually use to create perfect loops. The credit for this goes to Polyhop. I recreated this component using one of his tutorials. If you want to go watch it, I'll leave the link in the description. Otherwise, you can also download the component for free on our Patreon. The link for the free download will also be in the description. So once you've downloaded it, just insert it into your project. This component has these three waves taking different values. We need the third one going back and forth from 0 to 1. Let's put it here active and then we'll drag the third value and paste it on the crop top and bottom parameters. The crop top value will multiply by 0 0.4. From here, I'll go and add another mirror after the tile, and in the settings, let's increase both pivot values to 0 0.7. I'll connect the top network to the second input of the over and the render to the first input. So our shapes over the background. Also, let's disconnect the RGB key from here and connect it before the out top. Now, every time we move inside the network, this will also change the background of our animation. Great, and this was it for today's tutorial. I hope you could learn something from this video and it inspires you to try things out yourself. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye bye.